surprising genetic origins of Filipinos. For years, scientists believed that humans hadn't set foot in the Philippines until around 47,000 years ago, based on the famous discovery of the Taban Man in Palawan. But little did they know, a groundbreaking find was waiting to be discovered. In 2007, a team of archaeologists from the University of the Philippines and the French National Museum of Natural History embarked on an excavation project in the Calao Caves near Peña Blanca. As they dug deeper into the earth, they found a 2.4-inch metatarsal bone from the right foot. After analyzing it using uranium series dating, the team discovered that it belonged to a human who lived 67,000 years ago. Who was this human and what did it reveal about the genetic origins of Filipinos? Before we get right into it, let us know in the comments. What do you think this human revealed about Filipino ancestry? The Discovery of the Kalao Man The 67,000-year-old human was named the Kalao Man, and according to Professor Armin Maharas, the joint leader of the project, the Kalao Man likely reached the area by raft. This defies the conventional belief that humans couldn't have traveled so far by sea during this period. But how did these early humans develop such advanced seafaring skills? And what drove them to explore the unknown? As the team continued to excavate the site, they found more clues about the Kalao's man's lifestyle. Cut marks on the bones of deer and boar found around the human remains hinted at the fact that he was an efficient hunter. But despite the abundance of animal remains, the team couldn't find any evidence of man-made tools. It was as if the Kalao man had mastered the art of hunting, but left behind no tangible proof of his existence. The mystery deepened as Professor Maharas revealed that the bone found in the Kalao caves shared some striking features with today's Aetas, the indigenous people of the Philippines. Dissimilarities hinted at a possible connection between the ancient human and the modern-day Aetas. Then, in 2010, Maharas and his colleagues unveiled the 67,000-year-old fossil, which turned out to be a completely different species. This ancient human was then named Homo luzensis, and Yosuke Kaifu, a paleoanthropologist, expressed his excitement of studying this species. The discovery of Homo luzensis had led to an intense debate among researchers, with some questioning whether it's a distinct species or a variant of another human species. The fossils suggest that Homo luzensis might have been just over three feet tall, with curved finger and toe bones similar to those of tree-climbing Australopithecus species. Their premolar teeth had two or three roots, similar to the more primitive Homo erectus, while their molars were incredibly small with single roots. Ancient Inhabitants of the Philippines Besides providing crucial evidence of early human habitation in the archipelago, the discovery of the ancient Homo luzensis bones and the Taban Man also suggests that the Philippines was inhabited by early humans long before any foreign influences arrived. These findings have helped us understand human evolution and migration in Southeast Asia. The discovery of the Taban Man, in particular, has supported theories about how early humans moved across the region and adapted to different environments. One of the most important theories connected to this is the Austronesian Expansion Theory. This theory explains how the population of the Philippines grew due to the arrival of the Austronesians, which is a group of people who spoke Austronesian languages and spread across Southeast Asia, Oceania, and even parts of East Africa. The Austronesians include groups such as the Taiwanese Aborigines and inhabitants of smaller islands like Micronesia and Melanesia. Various models exist to explain their spread across the world, including the well-known out-of-Taiwan model. The Austonesian expansion theory focuses specifically on the settlement of the Philippines. According to Peter Bellwood, a professor of archaeology and anthropology, the Austronesians started their journey about 6,000 years ago from the Chinese mainland. By 3500 BC, they had populated areas around China, and within 500 years, they reached the Philippines. This marked the arrival of the first permanent settlers in the archipelago. After settling in the Philippines, the Austronesians did not stop exploring. They continued their migration, reaching Sumatra and Java by 2000 BC, northern New Guinea by 1600 BC, Samoa by 1200 BC, and eventually Easter Island, Hawaii, and Madagascar by 500 AD. These movements show how widely the Austronesians spread across the vast distances of the ocean establishing communities in many new places. 
Bellwood's theory suggests that the first groups who settled in the Philippines laid the foundation for the population that lives there today. Peter Bellwood's Austronesian expansion theory not only explains how people came to settle in the Philippines, but also why there are so many cultural, physical, and linguistic similarities between distant countries. These similarities include shared art styles, rituals, and traditions such as tattooing, which appear across different Austronesian groups. Language is also a core part of this theory. Diverse Languages in the Philippines Austronesian languages are divided into two main branches, which are Malayo-Polynesian and Formosan, and further split into more than 500 sub-branches. Despite the distance separating groups in places like the Philippines and Madagascar, they share elements of these languages. This linguistic connection supports Bellwood's theory and confirms the Out of Taiwan theory. In the Philippines alone, 87 Austronesian languages are still spoken today, proving a deep and lasting linguistic heritage tied to these ancient migrations. The migrations described by Bellwood influence not just culture and language, but also the genetic makeup of the Filipino people. One of the earliest groups to settle in the archipelago was the Austroasiatic peoples, whose arrival laid the groundwork for later genetic diversity. Over time, Malay and Indonesian groups brought new languages, customs, and genetic influences to the region. Another important influence on Filipino genetics came from the Chinese traders and migrants. Over centuries, trade and migration between China and the Philippines led to significant intermixing, especially in paternal lineages. This is why many Filipinos today carry Chinese DNA. Arab traders were also among the earliest outsiders to leave a lasting mark on Filipino genetics. When they arrived, they didn't just trade goods, they also brought Islam, which quickly took hold in parts of the southern Philippines. What's interesting is that these Arab traders didn't stay separate from the locals. They married into the communities, and over time, their genes mixed with those of native Filipinos. This genetic admixture helped add to the genetic diversity now found in the country, especially in areas where Islam became a strong cultural influence. Then came the Spanish, who ruled the Philippines for over 300 years. Ancient DNA and Haplogroups of Filipinos This period of colonization had a huge impact on the Filipino people, not just culturally, but also genetically. Many Spaniards settled down and made the islands their home marrying into the local population. Because of that, the Spanish left a clear genetic footprint that you can still see in the DNA of many modern Filipinos. Studies show a surprisingly high presence of European genetic markers called haplogroups in Filipino populations, and these markers are strong evidence of the Spanish legacy. After the Spanish left the Philippines, the Americans came in and took control for a while, bringing another wave of foreign presence. Although the American colonial period didn't last as long as the Spanish, it still had some impact on the genetic makeup of the Filipino people. This shows how every period of colonization and contact with outside groups contributed something to the DNA makeup of the Filipinos. Scientists and researchers have done a lot of genetic and anthropology studies to reveal the makeup of the different ethnic groups in the Philippines. One of the top projects to look into this was National Geographic's The Genographic Project which tested the DNA of many Filipino people between 2008 and 2009. The results showed about 53% of Filipino genes come from Southeast Asia and Oceania, 36% from East Asia, 5% from Southern Europe, 3% from South Asia, and 2% from Native American ancestors. When scientists took a closer look at specific genetic markers, they found some patterns that appear often among modern Filipinos. The most common Y-DNA haplogroup is called 01A-M119. This particular haplogroup is also found in high numbers among indigenous groups in places like Nias, Dementawai Islands, Northern Luzon, Batanas, and Taiwan. Another major haplogroup, 02-M122, is widespread in many East Asian, Southeast Asian, and Polynesian populations. There's also evidence of ancient Indian influence on Filipino genetics. Certain Indian mitochondrial DNA haplogroups like M52, 58, and M52A are present in the Philippines. This suggests that Indian migration to the archipelago began as early as the 5th century AD. 
Around 2,000 years ago, Southeast Asia became part of major Indian Ocean trade routes, which brought people, goods, and cultures from South Asia into the region. The genetic signals from South Asia didn't just stop in Indonesia. They spread all the way to the Philippines, especially among the Sama Bajo communities, who are known for their seafaring lifestyles. All these findings together reveal a history of migration, trade, and cohabitation of peoples that has made the Filipino population the diverse group it is today. If you enjoyed this exploration of the genetic origins of Filipino DNA, then hit the like button. To stay updated on more ancient history and recent impressive DNA analysis on these ancient people, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos.